Trials and Tribulations of the Collective West by Pepe Escobar Published, January 31, 2023 Sit back, relax, and enjoy a race to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. The only question is who will get there first, the EU, NATO, or both. One may be excused to imagine all sorts of amusement games unrolling at the HQ of the Russian general staff as the Empire and NATO go literally bonkers. What crazy stunt will they come up with next, short of World War III? Here is a delightful put-down of Nat O's dementia precox. Everything so far has failed, from crippling sanctions to all sorts of wound of often, while the whole global south marvels at the exploits of Wagner PMC, now configured as the planet's top urban fighting machine. CIA mouthpiece Washington Post duly released how Washington, once again, had the liver sausage Chancellor Schultz for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The idea was floated by Secretary of State Tony Blinken, let's announce we will deliver M1 Abrams to Ukraine in a hazy, unspecified future, thus providing cover for Schultz to release the leopards now. Don't you just love German sovereignty in action? Every military analyst with an IQ over room temperature knows all those leopards will be duly incinerated, or better yet, captured, and dissected by Russian military specialists. So what happens next is yet another vector of the very successful so far, US unleashed German deindustrialization racket, the Americans will invade the German industrial military complex with their much improved Abrams, which may perhaps arrive in 2024, when only a rump Ukraine may still exist, or never arrive at all. So no need for the Abrams to prove themselves in actual combat, as in being captured and or incinerated. Rumors in Washington advance that the US strategy in Ukraine, extensively detailed by endless think tank reports, had to be adapted. It's not about defeating Russia anymore but providing Kiev with the means to scare Russia. The Russian general staff must be trembling in their boots. Meanwhile, in real life, nearly every possible scenario gamed in Washington and Brussels finishes with NATO like a giant, armored version of Wile E. Coyote plunging to the depths of the Grand Canyon. And that happens even if the much ballyhooed Big Arrow Russian offensive starts in a few days or weeks, or never starts at all. Arguably the Russian general staff has concluded a long time ago there's no point in reducing Ukraine to rubble in a matter of hours, something they could easily accomplish. Thus the fabled mincing machine approach, offering no excuses for NATO to escalate, which they continue to do anyway, as Jen's war is peace Stoltenberg is so fond of parroting. The trick is that NATO's escalation overdrive, as it happens, is somewhat controlled by the Russian general staff, which is always calculating which optimal maneuvers will consume NATO's military hardware faster. Call it a Russian version of the popular axiom frog in a boiling pot doesn't realize it's been cooked until it croaks. Attacking Russia China Iran Absolute desperation is now graphically extrapolating into attacks on Iran. Both Russia and China have Iran as their key ally in West Asia for the whole, complex process of Eurasia integration, strategic partnerships interlink the trio. So attacking the Ministry of Defense in Isfahan with drones, total fail, and bombing an IRGC convoy of humanitarian aid crossing from Iraq to Syria is a serious US-Israel coordinated provocation. Essentially these are also attacks against Russia and China. Israel cannot lift its hand or foot without US permission. Iranian intel may be able to establish how the Straussian neocon and neoliberal concabal in charge of US foreign policy authorized if not ordered these attacks, which of course are directly connected to NATO's desperation in Ukraine. When in doubt, just come back to his big grand chessboard Brzezinski, potentially, the most dangerous scenario would be a grand coalition of China, Russia and perhaps, Iran, an anti-hegemonic coalition united not by ideology but by contemporary grievances. It would be reminiscent in scale and scope of the challenge once posed by the Sino-Soviet bloc. And mirroring Ukraine-Russia there's of course Taiwan-China. As Credit Suisse strategist Zoltan Pozar has extensively explained, 
If Taiwan manufactures chips for U.S. missiles Washington then sends them to Taiwan for its self-defense, but Taiwan needs to wait because the missiles are needed for Ukraine instead, or chips can't be shipped to the U.S. owing to a possible sea and air blockade imposed by China, the Americans will be operationally ill-equipped to support their two-front war against peer competitors Russia and China. Bye, by Pax Americana. It's the fear, actually, paranoia, of a destroyed Taiwan, and the destruction in every scenario would be provoked by the Americans themselves, that has led the Straussian neocon and neoliberal concabal to demand their chips be made in the USA. On the energy front, since US energy costs are low, Washington gambled that much of the deindustrialization of Germany would revert to American benefit. Yet since Iranian, Russian, and Venezuelan oil prices are lower than the US, not much production may be shifting to the hegemon, it will go to China. To the bottom of the Grand Canyon. The January 10 joint declaration between EU-NATO graphically shows how the EU is no more than the PR arm of NATO. This NATO-EU joint mission consists in using all economic, political, and military means to make sure the jungle always behaves according to the rules-based international order and accepts to be plundered ad infinitum by the blooming garden. So in the end what's left of Europe, when it's NATO, actually Washington, that really rules? Europe, according to relentless propaganda, means defending our values, as in peace, democracy, and prosperity. The trick is that unelected elites forced the implicit identification of this imagined, practically sacred Europe, with the European Union. And that's how the EU has acquired a mythical identity. Of course, in real life the EU dashes in the real, politically organized Europe, has performed as a toxic instrument of division among European peoples. Instead of peace, it has invested in an all-out rabid war against Russia. The EU is arguably the most democratically irresponsible institution on the planet, spend a day in Brussels and you understand everything. And instead of prosperity, the EU has institutionalized austerity. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a race to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. The only question is who will get there first, the EU, NATO, or both. Copyright 2010-2023 Strategic Culture Foundation, republishing is welcomed with reference to Strategic Culture Online Journal www.strategicculture.org. The views of individual contributors do not necessarily represent those of the Strategic Culture Foundation. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media. Download the BG Media app today or visit barglobal.net for more podcasts. Mm-hmm.